Well, hello everybody. Here we are in lovely San Francisco, and if you if you could see, we've got a nice view of the Bay Area here. But nonetheless, we're still in the uh, as you can see, nice offices of WaveMaker. I have a guest with myself, and would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. So I'm I'm Chris Keen. I'm the CEO of WaveMaker, and I've uh, we've been uh, building WaveMaker for three years. I launched the product uh, a little over a year ago. And uh, WaveMaker is a uh, web app development tool. It makes it easy uh, to build web apps, it makes it fast to build web apps, and you create standard web apps. Uh, it's also open source, and we've got a very active community. We've got about 15,000 registered developers now building, uh, building apps with WaveMaker. We, we were talking about, you know, obviously, on the infrastructure side, cloud computing is, is, is very popular nowadays because it seems like a kind of a more efficient way of doing things. Or, or it's not always necessarily the case, but it, you know, it's an interesting new way of doing technology. And, and recently, I guess I would say over the past six months or so, I've seen a lot more interested in, in application development on the cloud, which, right. which I kind of get excited about because I think, I think the, uh, the infrastructure layer is, you know, that's, that's all good and well, but you're going to reach a certain point where you've tapped out the, the interesting innovation. Uh, we have kind of a unique position here because um, we made a decision when we started WaveMaker that we were going to build a, a web development tool that ran in a browser. Um, and we weren't going to use Eclipse, we weren't going to base it on kind of a standard heavyweight IDE. And there were some specific reasons for that. The, the biggest was that we thought that people eventually would want to build apps in the cloud, uh, from the cloud, by the cloud, for the cloud, uh, without having to d d download things onto their laptop, that um, if you will, that the future of corporate uh, development is going to look a lot more like uh, Facebook and uh, LinkedIn and, and uh, kind of self-service right. uh, than it does today. It, I mean, would, it would be completely hosted. Some, yeah, I, I, I mean, today, uh, amazingly enough, you know, building anything within the enterprise is like mounting a, an, a, an expedition to Mount Everest. You know, you got you got teams of Sherpas. You've got all sorts of people with different specialized skills. It takes weeks. You got to have base camps. I mean, it's it's a heavy, heavy duty proposition. But if you want to go into Facebook and you want to tell people about the music you like or where you're going to have dinner or do a variety of things that to me seem a lot like customizing, extending it, making it do what I want it to do, well, I don't need Sherpas for that, right? And, and, and to be clear, I mean, WaveMaker is basically a, a tool for developing applications and there's a lot of data integration and, and UI stuff. And, but what are, the, what are the deployment, I mean, you can run it locally if you want to, right? right. Yeah, so when you download, you know, when you go to wavemaker.com and you do your download, then what you're actually downloading is a full uh, Tomcat Java stack. And you're actually running a web stack on your computer. Right. Uh, and when you launch WaveMaker, it actually launches a WaveMaker application in your browser. So one interesting thing about WaveMaker is we built, we built the tool with our tool. Another reason that we thought you know, having a web-based development tool would be pretty powerful. So we've already got, when we launched WaveMaker, we already had a very, very powerful web application that we developed with it. So it's a little the dog eating the dog food kind of thing. You can build your application running a stack on your computer, or you can go to cloud.wavemaker.com, see the exact same thing running in the cloud, in this case Amazon, and build your application there. One of the interesting things like, that I'm kind of hopeful that the cloud will pick up the slack on is, is I guess we used to call it like rapid application development or RAD or line of business apps, but having a bunch of little smaller applications that, to your point, aren't like a huge expedition that, that you go out there and do it into. And I wonder if, if that, that theory of the cloud enabling that kind of smaller app development, like do you see that playing out kind of? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, again, it comes back to the Mount Everest thing. If, if in order to climb a mountain, it's going to cost me $250,000, no matter the size of the mountain, well, then I'm going to tend to do a lot, you know, I'm going to tend to do a lot more every time I get, get that thing together. So yeah. IT doesn't build apps. IT builds applications. And the reason for that is it costs so much for them to get out of bed in the morning that uh, it's not worthwhile to get out of the bed to move around a few things. They've got to do something really big and, 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 and really meaningful in order, to, in order to justify the cost just for them to do anything. And so what we're really trying to get towards, and you were actually giving this example earlier, is mobile apps. You know, we have the notion now that I've got a mobile app to, you know, figure out where the nearest gas station is. And I got a different mobile app to tell me how to get to my friend's houses. And I got a different mobile app. We might have 10 different mobile apps that have to do with location. Well, the way enterprise IT works is they're going to get together all the requirements 
they're going to put together a very heavyweight project and team and really solve this location issue once and for all. And it costs so much that nobody can afford to go back and revisit that for another five or ten years. Whereas realistically, the first month this thing is in production, people are saying, you know, this actually isn't the way I want it to work. I, I just I need a button over here. Or I need it to do a little bit different. But of course, nobody can do that because the Sherpas are all gone. They've gone home, and you know we've got our trophies standing on our book sh bookshelf right. and whatnot. You can sort of have uh, quick and dirty apps if you want, or right. you can have the, the more long running ones. But but that is that is like one of the unfortunate things that uh, uh, perfecting IT has kind of evolved into is is it's very concreted in there. Like it, it seems right. like like change is not always the uh, the ideal thing, the, the feature that you want to well, offer. Well, and it's, it's weird too. There's kind of two two types of IT. There's the infrastructure IT, which has been forced, which has been focused on uh, doing uh, service oriented infrastructures and really getting the databases clean and whatnot. And that part of IT fits perfectly with this idea of apps, yeah. right? They've, uh, the basic services are there. The problem is there's no easy development tool sitting on the other side to consume those services. So it turns out IT built all of this great infrastructure, but then it was, comp it was so complicated to access it that the only people that could access it and build apps on it was IT themselves. And so they were never really able to get the benefits of it. Yeah, that's something you were discussing earlier then, that, that uh, reminded me of a funny cartoon. of I think it was a four-panel cartoon where there was this dead horse that had SOA on it. <laughs> And, and I don't know if you've seen that one. And, and there's these two people discussing where they're going to put it. And then, of course, the joke is, "We'll hide it in the cloud." But I mean, I, I think I think I think I think that's a very cynical way. I mean, I, I think the the more optimistic thing is, I mean, it's true. What you're saying is is we did spend we as the industry spent a lot of time servicizing everything. And to me, the killer app for cloud is ecosystem. So the cloud doesn't, uh, you know, everything you can do in the cloud, you can do in other places, right? So VMware will tell you the cloud is just virtualization and you've been doing that for years. And I mean, that was kind of the Larry Ellison joke that, that everything has been renamed cloud, including, as you said, SOA. Right. Um, I think what's interesting, though, is um, putting individual things in the cloud is not much different than putting individual things anywhere. What's different, though, is when you have multiple things there. If my database is in the cloud and accessible there, and my reporting is in the cloud and accessible there, and my Salesforce automation is in the cloud and accessible there, and it now becomes very easy, just a matter of service calls, to call all three of them and put something together between them. Now, that's something you couldn't get anyplace else. Right, right, right. So in the data center world, you know, my, my SFA was in one silo, my ERP was in another silo, my database was in another place. And it was a very big TIPCO-esque you know, undertaking to just get those three to talk together. But in the cloud, that's, that's, that's trivial. So let me give you an example. Uh, Kana is one of our biggest ISV customers. They do call centers. They're deploying the call center software for the US Postal Service this year, 20,000, 30,000 uh, employees. They initially built this application as something that was going to run just in a, um, you know, an enterprise data center. But because they built it based on WaveMaker, they realized, oh, we could put this in the cloud too. Uh, how many days do you think it took for them to get this application like 10 or 12 servers, databases, WebSphere, DB2, uh, you know, enterprise service buses. How many, you know, how many days do you think it took them to, to get onto the cloud, Amazon? Like four weeks or so? It took them two days. <laughs> what is it the tool does that fits in this kind of, this kind of development Well, so what's, what's really great in the case of Akana, an ISV, who's they've built this uh, very complicated call center you know, operation application. Uh, it's a set of workflows connected by a set of screens. Right. And what they've done is rather than just shipping this whole thing to you as a black box, they've basically shipped it as a series of WaveMaker applications that you can pick up and edit in the WaveMaker Studio. So if you decide at the US Postal Service, if you decide you know, we want to route things here and not there, that's a matter of a few minutes. If you decide you want to have a button on this side and not that side, or if you want it to be green and not red, uh, that's a matter of 30 seconds. So you suddenly have the ability for the people who are using the application right. to change the application, just like they would say a Facebook application. Why? Because they don't have to be Eclipse developers. They don't have to have anything deployed under the desktop. They just have to have the right permissions to get in and open up the uh, right. open up the applications, change the because workflows, they change it online and everything. And exactly. Online. So this is where you start seeing a really, really different approach to develop. Now, of course, this is for build for doing fairly minor changes. I think if people want to change fundamental things about the business logic, yes, they'll still need, you know, they still need your Java coders and all right. of those other things. 
But you know, those kinds of changes happen much less frequently than the, geez, I need a new field on this form. So, so like you said, it, it's about, was it, was it about a year ago that you launched? That, that, or that you were, yeah, right. So, yeah. Like, so you were saying you, know, you launched about a, a little around a year ago. And, and what, like, what's the most recent version that you guys have come out with? Like, what can, can you kind of bring us up to date on, on what, what you have at the moment? Yeah, so this one works. The other ones, the other ones did work. Um, <laughs> So we're at uh, we're at, uh, at WaveMaker 6.1 now, uh -huh. and um, uh, what we've what we've really been focused on is um, just making it incredibly incredibly easy to go out and grab services, uh, grab uh, existing Java code, grab uh, data structures, you know, in databases, and turn those into applications and. Um, uh, you know the, the the developer community is about fifteen thousand developers. We've built that in about a year. Just for reference, the Salesforce developer community—they've got thirty-four thousand registered developers that they've created over you know four or five years. Right. So we've gotten to about half of where Salesforce is in one year. And of course, we had a secret weapon, which is we're open source. So uh, we've got a lot more community involvement. We've got a lot more activity, and that's really kind of what's driving you know driving the momentum. And and like you're saying, I mean, you basically. There's various data sources that you guys can suck you can suck data from and start right. using it, and then and you can build the uh, layers or components or widgets or screens on top of that, and, and have various workflow attached to it. And so, I mean, what are those? What are those data sources that you guys are pulling from at, at the moment? Well, you know, right now we talk to any relational database. Um, we talk to all of the crazy CouchDBs and Cassandras and whatnot. Uh, we talk to any kind of a web service, uh, both the kind of formal WSDL, SOAP type web services, but more importantly, we think uh, the REST services, RSS services. Um, basically, what, what we do is we kind of create a, a hub, an ecosystem for just pulling all of these different services, existing code, existing data, uh, and building them into applications. Where we're going is to apply that same capability to SaaS applications. Right. So for example, imagine that you could kind of point uh, a web development environment at your Salesforce with your custom fields, all of your custom capabilities, and just suck out of it uh, all the data that you needed and change it and then put it back. So treat Salesforce, treat any SaaS application as a database. Right, right. Um, and imagine again this notion of apps, creating small enhancements, small piece of functionality that take Salesforce, which is pretty generic, and tweak it for your business to really make it do what you need for your business. Uh, now suddenly Salesforce becomes a competitive weapon. Yeah, and, and any application that you're building, you're taking advantage of all of the Salesforce validation and right. rules and everything. So you literally can't write a bad application against against the Salesforce database. It won't let you. Right, right. I mean, that gets back to like you're, we were saying earlier that there, there was a lot of uh, time and effort spent perfecting a service-based architecture or an SOA sort of thing, which, right. which uh, without that kind of nice layer of the infrastructure, it would be a lot messier when you're actually trying to apply it. So, right. so maybe, uh, maybe that dead horse actually had some benefit. <laughs> <laughs> well, and of course, the missing link is, you know, so like to, to take that horse metaphor, you know, there was no saddle for it. You know, there's yeah, no yeah, way yeah. for people to get up on the horse and go someplace, right? right. Um, you, you had to be a master bareback, you know, horse rider to be able to do something with sure. it. And so WaveMaker is really providing that easy interface that you can stick on top of your Salesforce, on top of your NetSuite, on top of your Oracle. Uh, you know, right. Oracle financials, and go someplace, do something useful. Well, I, I, I think I think we finally determined the the WaveMaker tagline. WaveMaker is the saddle for the cloud. It's <laughs> fantastic, and, and 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 I think on that Western note, you've uh, we're we're going to go get some barbie, some San Francisco barbecue, absolutely, and, and, which I'm looking forward to. So uh, so great. Well, I, I appreciate you taking the time to well, uh, thanks to chat a lot, with Michael. us about that. That was good stuff.